Everyone who owns an Android phone downloads their apps off the Play Store. It's a very common practice. However, there are still a ton of amazing Android apps that aren't on the Play Store that you never knew about since a lot of them aren't that popular. So today I'll be showing you what some of those apps are and if you want me to make a part two, drop a thumbs up on this video. Obviously there are some apps on the web that have malware. So if you're ever looking to download an app that isn't on the Play Store, just be very careful. The apps that I'm about to show off are completely safe and most of them can be found on F-Droid or XDA Labs. Those are alternative Android app stores that are well respected in the Android community. I'll also leave the download link to every app that I talked about in the description. Also, if you're interested in watching my videos in Spanish, make sure to check out my second channel called How To Men In Espanol. I'll drop a link in the description. The first non-Play Store app is a screenshot editor called High Shoot 2i. This lets you place screenshots into smartphone frames, but it takes it a step further by allowing anyone to create a template. Most of the templates can be found on a Telegram channel called High Shoot Templates. You basically go on that channel, scroll through until you find a screenshot template that you like, then you download the APK that's right below it. Once installed, open the High Shoot 2i app, and you can find the templates by tapping the gallery icon and then default. From there, you just select the template that you downloaded, go back, and then you can add a screenshot within the device frame by tapping the plus icon and then for a screenshot. And then you can find the screenshot within your files. You can also edit the background, shadow, frame, glare, and badge. Once you're done, you can save the image and upload it to wherever you'd like. There are other apps on the Play Store that function similarly, but none of them take it to this level. Moving on, one of the most annoying things within free applications or websites are intrusive ads. Now look, I have nothing against developers trying to make money off their apps, games, or websites, but there are a few that take it too far. I'm talking about free games that have non-skippable video ads on every other level, and they charge a lot just to remove the ads with no extra features. Articles that have auto-playing video ads with sound, full screen scrollover ads, pop-up ads, and finally, free applications that place large banner ads in the worst possible spots. So I set out to find a great ad blocker that not only blocks intrusive ads, but also stops trackers and doesn't require root. I stumbled across Blockada. In my opinion, it's arguably one of the best ad blockers I have ever used, and it's open sourced. Once you download it off F-Droid, you just toggle it on, and it'll create a VPN interface to block ads across all your apps and browser. You can also choose from a list of recommended hosts to block ads. For those technical users, all traffic will be filtered by the VPN connection, and it will only allow queries for hosts that are not blacklisted. On top of that, Blockada allows you to change the DNS service on your phone. They have some popular DNS servers to choose from, or you can add your own. And lastly, they have a feature called Blockada Tunnel, which encrypts your data, hides your IP address, and mocks your location. However, that feature does cost six bucks a month. Like I said before, it's one of the best ad blockers that I have ever used. However, if you like an alternative, I recommend DNS 6.6. But I did find Blockada to be more battery efficient, and it has a few more features. Before I move on to even more awesome apps, I wanted to give a shout out to Rap Power and Teotronics for sponsoring this video. Teotronics has a really excellent pair of wireless earbuds called the Sound Liberty 79, and they only cost 55 bucks on Amazon. A great alternative to other competitors like Apple or Samsung, which cost well over 100 bucks. The sound quality offers truly natural, authentic sound and powerful bass performance. It has excellent noise canceling technology to block out ambient noise by up to 96%. On top of that, they have touch controls so you can control your music, answer phone calls, or even open up Google Assistant. It has a fantastic battery life with each bud lasting up to eight hours on a single charge and their pocket sized charging case extends that playtime by up to 40 hours. Another great product that Rap Power is selling is a 15,000 milliamp hour power bank for only 40 bucks on Amazon. It has a compact design and LED display to show you the battery, which is pretty cool, and two output ports totaling 230 watts. One is USB-C, while the other is a USB-A port that supports Quick Charge 3.0. If I wanted to, I could quickly charge two devices simultaneously, plus it has incredible charging speeds allowing me to charge my iPhone 11 Pro from zero to 50% in only 30 minutes. Very impressive. There's a lot going for this portable charger and it has hundreds of five-star reviews on Amazon. So if you wanna check out both products, I'll drop a link in the description to check them out. Anyways, I wanted to show off a Chromium-based browser that is focused on enhancing your privacy as you surf the web and also includes an ad blocker. It's called Bromite and it has a few more features that Google Chrome doesn't have. So for example, you can play videos in the background for websites that Google Chrome doesn't support it has a native ad block engine with filters from EasyList, 
uBlock Origin, etc. And as I said before, it has more privacy settings such as support for DNS over HTTPS, which should significantly increase your user privacy since your DNS query will have an encrypted connection and you'll also have higher security since it'll better protect you against man-in-the-middle attacks. Google Chrome does have this feature, but it's disabled by default on their flags page. Plus, Bromite lets you use other third-party hosts that aren't just Google, such as Cloudflare, AdGuard, Quad9, etc. On top of that, Bromite automatically removes click tracking. It has anti-fingerprinting mitigations. You can have links always open automatically in incognito mode. And it has a ton of privacy and security patches from other popular third-party browsers, such as Brave or Iridium. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many under the hood changes or features that I didn't talk about that enhance your privacy and security in this browser. I know it's a lot to take in and some of this context might be confusing, but if you really do care about your privacy, then this is a browser that you may want to get behind. Viper for Android has been around since the golden days of rooting and it's still going strong. For those who don't know what Viper for Android is, it's a tool that will enhance your smartphone's audio. No matter if you're using headphones, the phone speakers, a USB connection or a Bluetooth device, you can modify the sound to the extreme. For example, if your wireless headphones don't provide that much bass, you can increase the bass frequency and gain. You can also make the sound even louder if your headphones don't get that loud. If you want surround sound, then you got it. There's a compressor, an equalizer, amplifier, etc. It's a very feature-packed sound app. There are even some options that I have no idea what they do, but for an audiophile, this app is gold. I definitely recommend it. The only catch is that it does require root to work because it does modify your sound drivers on your phone. The latest version is on XD Labs, so I wouldn't recommend downloading it off Magis Manager because you'll obtain an older version. The next app that I wanted to discuss really isn't an APK, but a progressive web app called AppScope, and it's a marketplace filled with web-based apps that you can download. For those of you who aren't aware, web-based apps mimic the same functionality of regular native apps, but they take up less storage space on your phone. So since they're small in size, they're pretty good alternatives for installing apps you barely use. For example, Instagram has an app size of 84 megabytes, but on the PWA version, it's just using the Google Chrome app as the base, and you can do most of the same things that you were able to do on the regular Instagram app. So you can think of AppScope as the app store for progressive web apps. You just go to your browser, look up appsco.pe in the search engine, and then select add AdScope to your home screen. Then add again, and you'll find the marketplace in your app drawer. Once you open it, you can tap on an app or game that you'd like to install, select launch app, tap the three dot menu, open in Chrome, then tap the three dot menu again, select add to home screen, and then add. Other sites perform a similar function to AppScope, but none do it quite so well. The last app on this list is Launcher 2. Now listen, I know this app is already on the Play Store and it's very popular. However, if you downloaded it off the Play Store, then you don't have all the latest features. I mean, the last time the beta version was updated on the Play Store was back in December of 2019. However, the truth is, is that the developers are still updating it on APK Mirror and they're calling these versions pre-alpha APKs. Obviously, you may experience a few bugs if you use the pre-alpha version, um, but if you do encounter a huge flaw, then you can just revert back to the previous version. Anyways, let's talk about the difference between the beta version of Launcher 2 and the pre-alpha version. Besides the fact that the pre-alpha version has a ton more under the hood changes and fixes, it also has preview pages in the settings for when you tap on the icon grid or you're trying to change the number of icons allowed on the dock. It makes it really easy to change the icon layout on your home screen. Within the desktop menu, it also shows you how your icons on the desktop will look. So if you want to modify the text size, icon size, color, etc., those changes can be seen live immediately within this page. The pre-alpha version has removed the app actions preferences in the app drawer, unfortunately. There are a few extra feature flags in the pre-alpha version in the developer options of the app settings. And finally, if you're rooted, running Android 10 and would like to use Quick Switch to enable the Recents page with the addition of the dock, then you will need to install the Launcher 2 pre-alpha version since the one from the Play Store doesn't support Quick Switch. So if you were wondering why Launcher 2 hasn't been updated in a while, now you know why. Either way, those are my favorite Android apps that are in the Play Store. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a huge thumbs up, get subscribed with the notification bell turned on, and follow us on Twitter at HowToMen to stay up to date with us. We do giveaways there, so just letting you know. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.
Kapow!